apostolic decrees and declarations. There is not much out there about the subject. I don't see any books or anything on even on the website. So I was asking God, Lord, He asked me to teach this thing. Give me a starting point, you know. Usually, I always respect the Mos Moses generation. I stand on the shoulders and we build up from there for our generation. I couldn't find anything. I was like, wow. The God said, Lord, help me. <laughs> you know, one of my very awesome mentors, Derek Prince, he doesn't have anything on this either. The God said, go to my scripture. All right, hallelujah. Amen. So I'm excited what God is going to do because I don't have any clue what I'm going to teach. <laughs> Amen. That makes sense. All right. So, apostolic decrees and declarations. I want you to look into the picture closely. Yeah. We can't see from that side. Come closer. Yeah. You know? So the decrees, declarations. So if you can see from the just the four hours, declaration is being loud, speaker. <laughs> decrees is something written. Declarations is like I declare judgments. Decrees is releasing some written things. Amen? Okay, let's move on. Luke chapter 11 verse 49. Luke chapter 11 verse 49. Therefore the wisdom of God said, I will send the prophets and apostles. This is the words of Jesus. Luke 11 49. If there is a therefore in the Bible, that means something has happened, therefore. You know? So you need to know what happened before so that you can tell therefore. So this is all about Jesus talking to the Pharisees and the scribes and the lawyers. In America we call attorneys, right? Attorneys? Attorneys. So the Bible tells liar. So, uh, so they were, God was just, uh, we have a lawyer here. Right? <laughs> so, uh, it's just a confrontation and God was just, Jesus was just rebuking them. You hypocrites and white-walled uh, sepulchers and because they talk a lot, they just bring burden to the people but they don't have real heart for God, you know. And because all of these things were going on in the Judaism, everything became so traditional and corrupt. Yeah. And God said, therefore, mm -hmm. I'm sending prophets mm -hmm. and apostles. Mm -hmm. Luke 11, 40. Mm -hmm. So if you want the whole script, whole chapters about them to read it. Therefore, the wisdom of God said, I will send them apostles and prophets. You need to understand, I don't know how many of you were in the previous school of ministry, I talk about the governmental uh, structure. Rabitsa was there. Governmental structure of Christianity, the office and the stewardship and the servantship, it's a big class I took. So some of them are very governmental positions in Christianity, apostolic and prophetic and <clears throat> you know the, the fivefold ministry is very up and very, very governmental. So the prophets and apostles has been raised by God and anointed them to take the governmental positions in the kingdom of God. So apostolic decrees are declarations or governmental prayers to bring the kingdom of God down to a region, to a situation. So apostolic decrees and declarations is all about the governmental aspect of Christianity, prayer life. So therefore the wisdom of God said, I will send the prophets and apostles but the scripture ends this way, that verse, but you will kill them and crucify them. <laughs> That's what the world will do for the apostles and prophets. The way Christianity taught us about apostles is completely different from Bible, what it says about apostles. The general idea because of lack of revelation at that point, because there's no much revelation about apostolic uh, 
during the Moses generation, I can call, before 20 years back. <coughs> so whatever the books we read, whatever the teachings that came through Christianity was not the right revelation because the apostolic age for our times, our generation. In the beginning, you all know that everybody knows about evangelists, the role of evangelists. Every Christian knows who is an evangelist, what is an office of an evangelist, no doubt about it. That's the reason there was so much stress on evangelism right. than discipleship. Mm -hmm. Then there came a wave of pastors. It's all about pastors. Everybody called them pastor, especially in the Western culture. Mm -hmm. Pastor, 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 everybody is pastor. <laughs> you know? Some of them are not called to be pastors. They're called to be apostles because there was no revelation. They called them so pastors. And of course, there was a teaching. Revelation came, so many teachers like Joyce Mayer and some of the Derek Prince yes. were all great teachers. Mm -hmm. Of course, the pastors and teachers role was mixing. Mm -hmm. Then came the revelation about everybody knows who's a pastor, who's a teacher, right? Mm -hmm. Then came the revelation about the prophetic age. Right. The church began to understand who's a prophet. People were afraid of prophetic in the church. Many of the prophetic people were killed in the church. They were chased out of the church because there was no revelation. They don't know how to handle the prophetic. Mm -hmm. So there was such a, you know, chaos. So then God began to reveal the prophetic people like C.D. Jacobs and so many prophetic people came into the picture. I'm just giving you examples because you guys are familiar with them. So some of the prophetic people came into the forefront. <clears throat> Initially they were just mocked and they were just chased from every church. But later the church began to understand the prophetic office, they begin to accept it. You know, Chuck Pierce and all these people. Then there was a confusion between prophets and prophecy, or pro pro prophets and prophecies. Mm -hmm. uh, all are called to prophesy, but not everybody is called to be prophet. There was a confusion between office and the function. Mm -hmm. So that was settled, of course, for now, I, I think at least, measure up that the body knows about the prophetic. So we have the four offices people know, uh, the evangelists, the teachers, the pastors, and the prophets. But the apostolic, they didn't have much revelation. Now God is revealing to our generation more about apostolic. In the previous revelation, apostles means they have to plant churches, <laughs> which is not true. You know, that was a common idea. The Bible college is start. Apostles means you need to plant a church. Apostles means sent one. That's fine. That is okay. Close to it. But what is apostolic? Apostolic is beyond what we think. The great apostle the Bible calls is Jesus Christ. So we need to understand his function, what he did, then we can understand the apostolic call. Apostolic brings the truth out. Wherever the apostolic goes in, there will be a breakthrough of truth. Truth will be revealed. You know the truth, the truth will set you free. The direct scripture connecting to is whom the sun sets free, is free indeed. So the truth and the sun and the apostolic. So the apostolic anointing comes, it pushes people into their destiny. And the apostolic is a forerunner anointing. It breaks open places. It breaks open new areas for the kingdom of God to come in. This is all in the notes. I told you what I'm going to teach. That thing will be in the notes. I'm sorry. So I'm just flowing with the Holy Spirit. This is all that new plan. Yes. So the apostolic is, is a breakthrough anointing. Many of the barriers, breakthroughs which are in the spiritual realm can be broken through with this apostolic anointing. And our generation is the age of multiplication of the apostolic office. So you remember 10 years before, if you say an apostle, they will see you as an imposter, you know? They will see you as a <laughs> um, heresy, whatever, yeah. cult. Yeah. Oh, this guy is calling himself as an apostle. Wow, he's so proud, so arrogant. Because yeah. yeah. they don't have revelation. Some of the pastors, 
we see they're not called to be pastors of the local churches. They're called to be apostles. Bringing the people to the next level. You know? But they are constrained into a local church, community church. They don't know what to do because they don't have revelation. Because they don't have uh, ideas to do more than what they can do being a communal pastor. So apostolic, what it does is releases governmental authority into the region. Governmental authority into a city. Governmental authority, wherever you go, the apostolic releases it. Apostolic leads people with an authoritative leadership style. There are two leadership styles, Devel development leadership and authoritative leadership. Development leadership is the leader teaches people and help them to follow what he teaches. Authoritative leadership, he will lead and he will demand other people to come to their level. That's authoritative leadership. I don't know why I'm teaching all this stuff. <laughs> you know? So authoritative leadership is he lives out and he demands others to come up to their expectation to go up to that level. So he draws, there's a strong authoritative anointing upon the apostolic that draws people from where they were to the next level. That's the reason since there is so much absent in the Western church. Because the church according to Ephesians must be founded on apostles and prophets. Since the churches are founded on pastors and teachers, some of the people who are mature in Christianity, like you guys, are not able to sit in the churches because the mundane things going on. So one thing, when I came out to Minnesota at the beginning, three years back, there were a group of people, they were all, I mean, they were in Christianity for 20 years. They were just soaked in Christianity, but they don't know what to do because they got a hit a level. <laughs> You don't know, we cannot go to any church, you're not getting anything, you're not getting, you know. Mm -hmm. The problem is, the churches are not founded on apostles and prophets as the Ephesians talks about. It's all founded on pastors and teachers. Mm -hmm. Since there is no apostolic, the prophetic will not be managed by pastors and teachers. The prophetic can be managed only by apostolic. That's the reason when the prophecies come forth, when the people who are gifted in prophecy, when they come and try to share prophecy in the churches, they are shut down. Because the pastor don't know what to do. The teachers don't know what to do with them. So when the apostolic comes, it controls the flow. When the fivefold ministry and giftings will flow like a stream. Amen? Who is the chief apostle? Jesus. So the whole Christian flows together when finally in our generation apostolic has come to the forefront. Now you see a lot of release of the power of God into the church. That's the reason when the apostolic comes into the forefront, then all offices will go together. Then what did Ephesians chapter 4 says? Some are called to be apostles, pastors, and teachers to teach the body until it comes to fullness. So we are into that stage. When the fullness unity comes into the church, that releases the glorious church at the end times. Amen? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Can you throw out some names of the apostles that are functioning in that capacity? Um, I can say a few of them, but uh, most of them won't accept my say because there's so much revelation. <laughs> I can tell Apostle Maldonado is really functioning in the realm yeah. mm -hmm. uh, from Florida. Apostle Maldonado, I respect him. Mm -hmm. Some of them, they call themselves apostles, but they are not apostles. Sure. Sure. Who else I can say? I know one, Apostle Solly, <laughs> that you guys would know, but that's where oh, I got yeah. those. Um, Who? Apostle Solly? Is he in town? He's from Africa. Yeah, is he in town? I don't no, know. No, no, I thought he was. Yeah, um, he just to give one example. That's fine. Apostle Maldonado really functions in apostolic God. There are also, we need to understand, there are different levels of callings of apostolic. They are apostles of prayer. Tom Hess is a great example. 
He never calls himself an apostle. And most of the thing is, the most people who are called to be an apostles, they never call themselves. Because they are the most generation, they are afraid. Because people will mock at them and they will just shut them down. But this new generation, like us, we are radicals because the revelation has come now. Because Jesus is coming soon. You know? So, Thomas is a great example for uh, apostle, apostle in prayer. He draws 200 nations to prayer. The apostolic will draw people. So, it's kind of a lot of uh, apostles, some of the apostles, you know, pastors are drawn, thousands of them come. Just the leaders will flock around them. That's the apostolic part. Everywhere you go, pastors gather, pastors gather, pastors gather. So there's a different kinds of thing, but I don't want to go into detail, that's not the um, focus for me now. So the apostolic, I just gave you an exact idea, a little bit of idea, so that I can come into what is apostolic decrees and declarations. Okay, my focus was not to teach about apostles at all, but I just wanted to give you an example, a review of what it is. Decree. Decrees. A formal and authoritative order, especially one having the force of law, a presidential decree. It's on the team. It's up up there. Formal and authoritative order, especially one having the force of law, a presidential decree. In other words, a decree from the king. So you can see this word decree and declaration more in the book of Esther, Daniel, Ezra, and Nehemiah. Nehemiah. Mm -hmm. These words are used heavily in these chapters because it deals with kings and decrees and declarations. So that is on the world perspective, governmental decrees, president's decree, but on the theological aspect, what are the eternal purposes of God by which events are foreordained? The decrees of God. That's why we saw the, the picture. The decrees of God. The decrees of God is nothing but one of the eternal decree of God by which events are foreordained. One of the eternal purposes of God by which events are foreordained. In other words, the decrees are written in the word of God. The word of God, prophetic words are all decrees that will bring the eternal purposes of God through his manifestation, through the events that will take place on the earth. So those decrees, I'll give you an example so you'll understand. So those are the decrees that's written in the word of God. This is a heavy subject after we eat. <laughs> I know that. But I, I give you all the, uh, we'll give you the recording so you can digest later. Okay? Mm -hmm. So whatever is written on the word of God is, this is a decree from God. For example, we proclaim this morning, which we'll do again. Mm -hmm. Decree that the one who scattered Israel will gather again. That's a decree written by God. Yeah. That is an eternal purpose of God, which is taking place in our generation now, the second time. Do you understand? So the decree was already written, the eternal purposes of God will take place to the events that happens in the world. For example, is the Aliyah of the Jewish people, which has been decreed before. So Job 22, 28. You will also decree a thing and it will be established for you and light will shine on your race. What is decree? Releasing God's word and revealing the will into the atmosphere. Closely goes with the proclamation, but this goes another step level into governmental anointing. Proclamation is for every believer. Apostolic decrees and declarations, unless you get the revelation, we cannot proclaim, we cannot decree. You need to have pro proper revelation from the Word of God to decree things. So, decreeing is a biblical thing, a decree of thing, and it will be established. What are you going to decree? You cannot decree whatever you like. You need to decree from what God has written to fulfill the eternal purposes of God. Do you understand now? Does it make sense? But you can proclaim it. You can proclaim it. Proclaim it, proclamation is for everybody. You know? 
So apostolic decrees, some of them, are because you can see in my meetings, I do a lot of declarations. I'll do one and show you example. I do a lot of declarations. If you have been in the first uh, New Year service, I did a lot of declarations. Those declarations were spoken to me by God, so I declared into the atmosphere. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to declare it about a situation, you need to pick up the decree from the Bible and declare it. So decree is a written word of God, you see that. So now we're going to declaration. The act of declaring something is what is called declaration, which is, I told you, the loudspeaker. You speak it out, the decree. That's declaration. Amen? You speak out what the decree says and you declare it. The act of declaring something. Declaring the decree. It's interesting, huh? <laughs> declaring the decree. That's what the Bible says. Turn to Psalm, turn your Bibles to Psalm chapter 2. This will give you more idea of what I'm talking about. The Bible makes it clear. For seven. I will declare their decree. See? Mm -hmm. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Okay? Let's stop there. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. What does it mean here? It's a decree according to the Trinitarian Council that Son of God will come to earth. Because Jesus was eternal God, He was eternal Word, and He was God. Correct? Mm -hmm. So He was not a Son in heaven before. You need to understand that. He was eternal Word. Mm -hmm. He was the Word of God. <coughs> but God decreed, today I have begotten you as a son, and I'm going to send you to the earth. So the decree was declared, and that's the time he became a begotten son. Did you get it? Yeah. It's pretty hard to understand. Jesus was eternal word. Everything that was created was created through Jesus. That's what Proverbs says. Everything was created by Jesus. John, the first chapter, talks about it. Everything was created by Jesus. At the same time, the Bible talks about everything was created by God's Word. So, Word is who? Jesus. The book of 1 John, the Bible tells three things that witness us in heaven. Three things. We are no fathers and the spirit, but the Bible tells Father, the Word, and the Spirit. So Jesus was Word, He was not a Son. Until the decree was made. Jesus is the Word, yeah. Jesus is the Word. So when the decree was declared that I'm going to make you my begotten Son, because you need to go to the earth to redeem the mankind. So the decree was declared. When it was declared, when God's word was declared, then it manifests. Every time you decree something, God's power will bring the manifestation of what you decree. Amen? Verse 8. It will make more sense if you read verse 8. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for an inheritance. Who is he talking to? Jesus. Jesus, the one that begot the Son. The nations for an inheritance, and the ends of the earth for a possession. It's a messianic age. Christ's kingdom. He's talking about Christ's kingdom. So I'm declaring a decree that we have decreed that you are going to be a begotten Son. I'm declaring it. Then he became begotten son and he manifested on the earth. The word became flesh and dwelled tabernacled among us. And because he paid the price for the people, tongue and the nations, God said, ask me, because you have paid the price on the cross. The nations will become as an inheritance. 
and they shall rule for the millennium over all the nations. Christ's kingdom. I'm not talking about God's kingdom. Christ's kingdom. Millennium is Christ's kingdom. And then Jesus declares after a thousand years rule, everything of everything become everything became God's. Father God's kingdom. That's God's kingdom. You remember the revelation? But everything becomes God's after the millennial rule. So the ruling of the nations is for the Christ's kingdom, millennial rule. Amen? Amen. Does it make sense? Yeah. Declaring the decree? <clears throat> All right. Decrees and declarations. So this is the difference between decree and declaration. Okay? Declaring a decree is declaration. Decree is God's written word for the purposes of God to be fulfilled. Decree and declarations. Governmental prayers to establish the kingdom of God in a situation or in a region, in a country. It's a widespread love. It's governmental prayers to establish the kingdom of God in any situation. To usher in an event or eternal purpose of God into the earthly realm. Amen? Great example again. Eternal purpose of God is for Jewish people to gather back to Israel. So we declare it. Decree. Declare the decree that God written in over 600 scriptures that Jewish people must go back to Israel. To declare God's counsel, wisdom and prophetic insight. You will understand when I teach you the next uh, slide that how you can get into that mode of operation. Amen? Yeah. So I told you this one. To declare God's counsel, wisdom, prophetic insight is decrees and declaration and story. Psalm 2, 7 and 8, we saw this. I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me, you are my son, the kingdom of Christ. That's what I talked about. Remember? For example, Daniel's chapter 6 verse 8. Now your majesty issue the decree and put it writing so that it cannot be altered. In accordance with the law of Medes and Persians which cannot be repealed. Daniel 6 8. In other words, every decree that is God made by king cannot be altered at all. Nobody can change it. No demons can change it. It may be delayed because of our sins and our disobedience, but it can never be altered, never be changed. King's word cannot be altered, it will come to pass. For example, Psalm 148, verse 6. This will give you a, a, a deeper understanding. When a decree is issued, it cannot be altered, it cannot be negated, it cannot be undone. Psalm 148, 6. He also established them for ever and ever he made a decree which shall not pass away. Period. Amen? What does it mean? If God says something, it will never pass away. It will never pass away. It will come to pass. When it will come to pass, when the children of God begin to declare the decree, then it will come to pass. We understand what I'm talking about? Proverbs 8.29 is a great example of the decree. When he gave, this, gave to the sea his decree. See that. Mm -hmm. When he gave the, to the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandment. <laughs> Amen. So this Proverbs will give you a great, great example of what his degree is and it cannot be altered. Think about this. Because God spoke to the seas, do not transgress the beach of Florida or beach of Los Angeles, you know. One second God just forgets about his degree, you know. Praise God, it's ever established. When he gave to the seas, decree that the water should not pass his commandment. Once it is done, it's established. Nobody can change it. Nobody can handle it. It will come to pass. Some of the examples from the Bible. So from this example you will know exactly what it is. Decreeing a declaration. 
Declare his glory among the heathen, his marvelous work among all nations. Amen? Amen. Number one, everybody can do is being a witness. When you witness, you are declaring God's marvelous work, what God has done in you. That's the reason Jesus gave so much importance to be a witness rather than preaching to millions of people. Witness, 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 witness. If everybody witnessed to his neighbor, to a person with a job, a person in the parking lot, a gas station, I'm telling you, the world can be won very easily. But the Christianity completely altered it. Be, it's all become about missions and doing evangelism and doing mass crusades and so much emphasis and so much stress and energy went into that. But God was all about simple witnessing in a grassroots level. Witnessing to each other. So when you witness, declare his glory among the heathens, his marvelous work among all nations. Job 28, 27. This is where you'll understand how you can enter into the role. It doesn't come for a normal Christianity, normal, in other words, a Christian practicing normal Christianity. It's more than that. Number one, you need to be called into the office. Number two, you need to be soaked into the presence of God. See what it says, Job 28, 27. Then he saw wisdom and declared. One of the translations says, then he saw it. You get a prophetic insight from the Lord and then you declare it. Amen? You get a prophetic insight from the Lord when you are in worship, when you are praying, when you are interceding. The greatest example is Psalm 83. It's a prophetic insight from Asa in the presence of God. So you get a prophetic insight out of God will quicken the word of God and decree that God has already decreed in His word which needs to come to pass, which has not come to pass. And God quickens it and we declare it. Amen? The decree is declared. Isaiah 21, 6 gives a great example again. But thus has the Lord said to me, Go set a watchman. Let him declare what he sees. The apostolic and prophetic will declare not necessarily only from the Bible, which has already decreed things, but also into the prophetic realm of what is coming to a nation, what is coming to a city, what is coming to a people group. They are watchmen. What God shows them when they are watching with the great watchman. Mm -hmm. When you minister unto him, God will begin to share his secrets. That the people will declare. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So that is apostolic and prophetic declarations. He can't get it just because reading 10 minutes of Bible and going through your own business. <laughs> of course, not all of them are called. That's the reason calling is very important. If nobody is driving the bus, everybody wants to be apostle, prophet, and pastor, and teacher. How is the world going to run? You know what I mean? But at the same time, if not necessarily you need to be called into a full-time ministry to function in this thing. It's all about your prayer life, your intimacy. As I spoke in the last school, you need to be functioning in your priestly calling first. Then you can function in the ruling aspect of your life. This is kind of ruling. Ruling from the spiritual authority, declaring a decree. So you need to be functioning in your priestly function properly, then you can come to this next level. In other words, simply put, you need to spend more time with the Lord. <laughs> That's the bottom line. And the Word of God. Unless you know the Word of God, you cannot declare prophetically or apostolically. I'm sorry. Amen? So spending more time in the word of God is very important because you don't know what is the eternal purpose unless you know the word of God. Amen? Amen. So set a watchman. Let him declare what he sees. So it's very important. So me and my family are going back to Israel in June for four months. They're going to be watching on the walls of Jerusalem. We've been involved in 24 hours prayers and Worship in the 24 hours prayer house. What are we going to do? We will watch. We will be praying for America from there. We will be watching with the watchman. <laughs> from the morning of Hallelujah. Yeah, right. 
that if God shows us something, we'll be declaring it so that the people can be prepared. So that's the reason being a prophet and apostle is not as you see on the television and as what you see that Christians are talking about. Apostolic and prophetic is very dangerous. It's not like you see the flights going and uh, I don't know, whatever. That's not the real thing about the apostolic. No, it will give. God will give you all those stuff. But the apostolic is so 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 with the Lord and prophetic. Amen. Okay, so we did this morning, Jeremiah 31 10. This is a classic example. It has been decreed by God that the Jewish people will gather back from all over the world back to the nation of Israel for the second time before the coming of the Lord. That's a decree. God has written a decree. What we did this morning? We declared it. Declaration. Because proclamation, everybody can do for their own needs. They can warfare for the finances, they can warfare for the healing, they can warfare for their marriages. But it moves on to the apostolic level when you do for the nations. When you do solely for the purposes of God to be fulfilled. Amen? That's why it goes to government. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it on the eyes of Pharaoh and say, he who scattered his sin will gather him and keep him as a shepherd does his flock. We did it this morning. This is declaration of the decree already decreed by God thousands of years before for our time. That's the reason Job says when you decree it will be established. Every time when we gather and decree it's going to be established. The manifestation of his promises will come to pass. For one reason to bring forth the eternal purposes of God for the redemption of us. Amen? By the way, talking about Israel, we're going to this Thursday, we'll have an Aliyah prayer time in Janet's house. So you guys are welcome to join. I'll be teaching about Aliyah a little bit uh, detailed. I haven't talked anywhere about Aliyah. So I'm going to talk about Aliyah just one time, then it's all of the prayers. So we'll be praying every fourth, fourth Thursday, correct? Every fourth Thursday. We're going to gather at Janet's place uh, to pray for Aliyah. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 2. This is a great place. I'm going to link my calling to this scripture. Why I'm always declared the king is coming. Do you remember? Yes. Every time you see me I declare the king is coming. Yes. Yes. Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 2. Before the decree is issued. Before the decree is issued, Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 2, New King James Version. Before the decree is issued or the day passes like a chap, before the Lord's fierce anger comes upon you. Before the day of the Lord's anger comes upon you. What does it mean? The Lord's anger will come upon the nations when the king is coming. Amen? Amen? Before the decree is issued for the tribulation to be tribulation to begin, yes. though the king is going to come second time to take up the throne, what my declaration is not about the king is coming to take up the throne. My declaration is the king's coming to take us home, the rapture. Yes, yes, yes. Amen? Yeah. So it is decreed before the fierce anger, if you read the whole chapter, it gives a great insight into what you should do. To be, let me read the scripture. Verse 3. Seek the Lord, all you people of the earth, who have upholds justice, seek righteousness, seek humility. It may be that he would be hidden in the day of the Lord's anger. Yes. We are not destined for wrath. Bible clearly tells us. Right. He's chosen his people, his believers are not chosen for wrath of God. So you will be hidden when the world is going through trouble. How? Jesus comes us and takes us home, rapture. So my call is to declare the king is coming to prepare the church for the rapture. So this is the decree already issued. So I de declare every place I go, the king is coming. Yeah. Because as a mantle I carry, so when I declare it, there's a lot of power released into the atmosphere. Yes. When they say the king is coming, everybody is like, wow, the king is coming. Yeah. You know? yes. Yes. So the decree is there and declaring it. Do you get it? Does it make a, a little bit clearer? Yeah. 
the king is coming. <laughs> so the decrees declare. So this is all about declarations. I gave you some examples, though it is a kind of a deep subject, uh, a nature. No, we don't. Oh, this what it is. Decrees and declarations. Amen? I think I need to write a book on it. <laughs>